What up everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with our perimeter unit. Today we're going to be looking around at perimeter word problems. So let's check out our objective. Our objective today, today I will be able to solve perimeter word problems by using my sides check strategy. Our math vocabulary today has been the same for all of our lessons. It is perimeter, which is the total length around the edges of a figure. And then here are some keywords that we're going to be looking at today in our word problems. Words that help us know perimeter. First one is perimeter, right? That makes sense. If they're asking to find the perimeter, you're doing perimeter. Around, fence, and border. Those are the keywords you see a lot in perimeter questions. But the important thing is that you draw a picture, all right? You don't just want to be a keyword grabber or a number grabber. These keywords aren't for you to memorize to say, oh yeah, I need to add. These keywords are to help you know things that clue you into the fact that you're doing perimeter. And these are all the words. Anytime they're asking you to find the total length around the edges or around the border or anything around the outside of a figure, they're asking you do, they're asking you to do perimeter. So we can't teach you all the key words, but we want to have you visualize and draw a picture so that way you always know what you're doing. And to do that, you know here at Instructive Beats, we love our sides check strategy. You can check out our sides check strategy song if you don't know what that is. It is an awesome song. Um, and our S is to start with a statement. So it says, how many inches of icing will he need? So my statement's going to say, he will need blank inches of icing. All right, so my statement is my guiding light. I'm going back and looking for anything about inches or anything that he is using icing for or how much icing he needs. So it says Devin is decorating a cake by adding ices around the edges. All right, that's a key word. That's telling me I might be doing perimeter. If I'm going around the edges, that is the definition of perimeter. The cake measures 13 inches in length and 9 inches in width. I'm identifying these not because they're numbers, but because they had to do with my statement. How many inches of icing will he need? So my statement was he will need blank inches of icing. I know that he's going around the edges of a cake that's going to be a rectangle because they only gave me two dimensions. How many will he need? So I've identified, I now think I'm doing a perimeter question, which means I need to develop my plan by drawing my picture. So I'm going to draw his rectangular cake. And again, I knew it was a rectangle because they only gave me two different dimensions. My length is 13, my width is 9. Again, though, the biggest misconception people have about perimeters when they only see two numbers, they think, oh yeah, I need to add. Well, yeah, you do need to add. But it's not just those two numbers because then you're only putting icing around half the cake. You have to go all the way around. So we need to use our rectangle knowledge. If my length is 13, that means the opposite side is going to be congruent. That's also going to be 13. And then my width is going to be 9, which means the opposite side is going to be 9. The biggest mistake I see students or people make as they solve perimeter questions is they rush through it and they don't add all the sides. They only add two of them. So I'm going to be using my part whole model here to help me visualize the addition that I'm doing. I know I'm looking for the total, okay, because I'm looking for the perimeter. I know I have two equal groups of 9. There we go. And then I had two equal groups of 13. So to find the sum or to find the total, I need to add them all up. So 9 plus 9 is 18. 13 plus 13 is 26. And then all I'm going to do is take my time to make sure I don't add incorrectly. I'm going to regroup and I'm going to say my perimeter is 44 inches. So he's going to need 44 inches of icing. If you noticed what I did, I wrote a statement. I let that guide my thinking to find out what I should identify. I didn't just identify numbers or words for no reason. I used all of that information to help me develop my plan, draw my picture. Then I wrote my equation with my visual model and solved it. And I checked it by putting it in my statement. So here's a you try problem. I want you to go ahead and try this one out, okay, using your sides check. If you're ready, go ahead and push pause. Then you can push play and check your work. If you're not there yet, it's okay. You can make this another we do problem. So hopefully you just paused it and you're checking your work. Your question says how much yarn will Keaton need? So I'm going to say, Keaton, oh, sorry, I'm going to write my steps over here. That way I remember what to do. Got my sides check strategy. My statement's going to say, Keaton will need blank yard. All right. I'm going to go back. I'm going to look for anything about yarn or anything she might need. So it says Keaton is making a picture frame and wants to add a border of yarn around the edges. So I'm doing a border 
around the edges of my frame. That clues me into that I'm probably doing perimeter. The length of the picture frame is six inches. I'm not identifying this because it's a number. I'm identifying it because I'm putting yarn around the border, so I need to know the length and the width, which is four inches. You're not just identifying numbers to identify them. We want you to understand what you're doing. Now I wrote my statement. I've identified. I know this is a perimeter question because I'm putting yarn around the edges of something. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the picture frame. Again, I know it's a rectangle because they only gave me two dimensions. There we go. Oop, that is not a great picture frame. I'm going to label what I know. All right. So I have my length of six, my width of four. Again, sticking to what we just talked about, the biggest misconception is people are going to be rushing through this and say the answer is 10. And you better believe if you're taking a multiple choice test, one of the answers would be 10. You have to go all the way around. So when you're doing perimeter, label all of your sides. Then I'm just going to put it into my part whole model. I know I'm looking for how much yarn Keaton will need, so I'm looking for the perimeter, which is going to be my total. I have two groups of four, and then I had two sides that were both six. I have my width, my width, my length, and my length. I need to add up all of the edges. When I do that, I get four plus four is eight. Six plus six is 12. When I add those together, I'm going to get 20 inches. So she will need 20 inches of yarn. So what we want you to take with you today is you need to do your sides check. Don't just look for keywords. Understand the problem. If you notice for every question that we did, I drew a picture of it. I labeled it. Then I did my tape diagram to help me solve it. I didn't just circle words. I explained why I was circling them and what they helped me know about the question. Understand the problem. Don't just be a keyword or a number grabber. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We really appreciate you spending your time with Instructor Beats. You can check out our area and perimeter song if you need a little bit extra help. As always, please like and subscribe. Instructor Beats, out.